What's up, motherfuckies? Woody Woo here. Y'all already know what time it is. It's time for another wonderful episode of Worlds from Woody Woo Serious Sit Downs. Today, December 26th, 2015. Today is my pop's birthday. For those of y'all that don't know, Woody Woo's a junior. My old man, Woodrow Wilson Morris Sr., passed away of liver cancer some time ago. As y'all can see from all my videos, I do what I do in memory of him. But today's his birthday. So, I'm just making a video primarily about my dad. So, I'm just going to begin this out right quick with be nice, be kind. Hope y'all stick around to hear this. My dad was a wonderful, wonderful man. No matter the ups and downs we had, I got nothing but respect and love for him. And I have some regrets, but it's alright, you know what I mean? Because we got through that before he passed away. But in this video, I'm just going to tell a couple stories about some shit that I remember about me and my old man. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the type of man he really was. I mean, if you knew the man, you don't need me to tell you. But I'm gonna do that. And I'm just gonna spend a couple minutes, yo, remembering the good times with my pops. You know what I mean? Happy birthday, Dad. I love you. I miss you. Be nice. Be kind. You already know. So, I'll go ahead and I'll get started, but I'll get started way, way back when. <laughs> I'm going to take you guys way back when, when Woody Woo was a little one. You know what I mean? I remember growing up on Burner Avenue in Hagerstown, Maryland. You know what I mean? I had my Aunt Peggy beside me and whatnot. My mom and dad were still together at this point. And... As far as I remember, all was well, you know what I mean? My dad was working at Maryland Metals at the time. He was bringing home the cast. Good times, you know, I was a kid. You know, you don't realize all the problems. Everything's fine and dandy. I remember my dad getting home from motherfucking work. And cooking dinner. And cleaning and all that shit, you know what I mean? My mother wasn't lazy, don't get shit twisted. My mom wasn't lazy, but my dad wasn't either. And he respected my mom's 100% more than what you see guys do nowadays. You know what I mean? I was brought up where, you know, a relationship is 50-50. I mean, that's what I was told. Looking at it, to be honest, when my mom and dad was together, it was more like 70% my dad. Motherfucking 40%, I mean, 30% my mom's. Because he did go to work. Without complaint, he was bringing home money. He'd come home and he helped my mom out and give my mom time to relax. All while maintaining, you know, laughs and shits and giggles with us kids. You know what I mean? I remember in Burner Avenue, he used to build this motherfucking chair type shit out of sodas and shit. And I'd hang out with him out there while he was doing dishes and whatnot. Same same residence, Burner Avenue, another story. I remember just going down there. We had, in our basement, he had like a little workshop deal set up. You know what I mean? And I don't know back then why he would always go down there. But like later towards the afternoon, like after dark, he'd go down there and do his own little things. You know, build on shit, crush cans. And well, he always had a bit down there. It was this nice little bed in the corner or whatnot I guess maybe my mama used to kick him out of the bed at night or uh, something shit I don't know anyway but I remember going down there and just just watching him build and being amazed at the skills this man had with his hands the man used to walk with the Hagerstown Police Department as a mechanic you know what I mean before he called his own charges, he used to be a mechanic for the police department. And then, you know, he used to do all the, the bicycles for Twig Cycles. 
my dad was like excellent with his motherfucking hands and he always walked walking 40 some hours a week or not he'd come home and walk on the house you know what I mean he was always being productive I don't know why that was I don't know if it was his own reason to keep shit off his own mind or he was doing it for us I honestly think he did it for us kids I I can go back to motherfucking West Washington Street you know West Washington Street here in Hagerstown Maryland it was an alley like I think it was right by Winter Street I think if you go down Winter Street and you come down to West Washington Street or whatever, there's this alley. But anyway, long story short, we was living on West Washington Street. My dad built us a playhouse in the backyard. I believe it's still there. It may not be a playhouse now. It may not be a playhouse now, but it should still be standing because it was a legit building. Now back then, you know, permits and shit wasn't necessary, but... He had permission from the landlord. He built it, and it's still standing there. Now, in this playhouse, it was a set of bunk beds. You know what I mean? We had our own little funnel in the, the hole. You know, like a like a like a funnel hose type shit that went outside. So when it was cold outside, we didn't have to go outside or go inside to use the bathroom. We just pissed, and it ran off into the alley. You know what I mean? And I mean, it was insulated. It was all that. I mean. It was so nice that we actually rented it out to a friend of ours at one point. If we wanted to, we could watch TV and all that shit up in that motherfucker. My dad spent a lot of time on that shit. He didn't avoid me. He was always coming around trying to spend time with me. So there's no hate there. Because, I mean, you know, usually when moms and dads separate, you know what I mean? The motherfucking, the dad seems to fade away. My dad didn't. My dad tried to stay in my life, and I'm the one that was like, yo, I'm doing this, I'm an idiot, do, 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 do. You know, I was being a kid, you know what I mean? Like I said in my Thanksgiving video, I'm grateful that I got my shit together enough to have a relationship with my old man beforehand. And I'm grateful that he understood, because me, I mean, if I'm saying this shit to you, best believe I said this shit to my dad. Me and my dad had discussions. That's another thing, you know what I mean? Like, after me and my dad got close, it was every day, every morning we'd be on the phone together. I mean, I could call that man 3 a.m. Yeah, I might wake his ass up, but he wouldn't hang up. He wouldn't tell me to call back. He'd be like, well, why did you call? You called for a reason. Don't worry about it. I'll go back to sleep. But you know what I mean? It was never a wrong time to call that man. My dad was always there for us kids. You know what I mean? God bless him. I mean, I remember, look, right after my mom and my dad separated, I made the decision to go with my dad to West Virginia. We went to my grandmother's house, Hester's. We went there, and I remember, like, as a kid, I think I was like eight years old, I remember just sitting out on the hood of his car and looking up at the stars. Yeah, Woody Woo did some gay shit, I know. Hate all you what. But me and my father, you know what I mean, spending some good quality father and son time, we'd lay out on the hood of his car, and just watch the stars and talk and those memories stand out a lot more than you know materialistic shit to me I mean how many people can say that the dad sits down and actually has a heart to heart with him usually you know with us guys we on that tough shit and we don't want to release emotions not my dad <laughs> as a kid I hated it you know what I mean he'd sew up and he'd be emotional and he'd be crying because well I just avoided him for two months. What did I expect? You know what I mean? But I wasn't looking at it back then. So, he'd get all emotional when he did see me. But I look back at it now and I'm like, what a good father. You know what I mean? Because most dads are worried about the masculine or the manly emits or whatever you want to call it. My dad, my dad was more of a man because he showed his emotions. You know what I mean? I mean, my dad's known for the famous words, be nice, be kind. When you guys hear this motherfucking Woody Woo say that shit, I'm carrying that on for my father. You know what I mean? Be nice, be kind. He lived by that shit. I mean, let's be real. The man's a forgiving, loving. That motherfucker is the most loving man I've ever met. The most forgiving man I've ever met. Nobody has ever showed me a heart like he has. We had a little altercation, 
and I sawed up my father with a knife. And the next day, he was out there trying to visit me, trying to put money on my books. You know what I mean? Because he, he valued family more than that. He realized people make mistakes, but that's not what he was about. It was about, hey, you, love can overpower everything. As gay as it may sound, because, hey, I was there at one time where I was like, yo, that motherfucker shit gay as shit. But as you grow up and you realize that the more you lose people, he was right. Love can overpower everything if you allow it. He was always forgiven. People stole from him and all that other shit. And he was right there to forgive him and keep a relationship going because he felt like it was better to stay in a relationship and help somebody than to just let him go and let him fail. I hope one day that I can become half the man my dad was when it comes to that. When I think about forgiving and loving, my dad pops up automatic because he's my example of that. Everybody else in my family growing up, we wasn't so forgiven. You know what I mean? Look at me. Woody woo. I don't got no kinfolk. When my dad died, that was the last of my blood that talked to me. You know what I mean? For real, for real. Nobody comes over my house. I don't talk to nobody else in my family like that. That just goes to show you right there that the rest of my family don't know shit about love and forgiveness when it comes to the main principle. You know what I mean? My dad tried to show us all that. I had to take that principle and add it to my life because there was too much good to my dad not to. You feel me? I can't give you guys a lot more except for a loving, forgiving, caring, hardworking, honest, caring, trustworthy, loyal individual who loved his kids and his family more than anybody or anything. Till his dying day, he was thinking about his kids and the effect his death was going to have on everybody else. Not that he was in pain, you know what I mean? He was worried about everybody else. He, he, he's never cared about himself. He's always cared about his kids, his mom, and his brothers and all that. Family is everything, and that principle came from my father. Great loving motherfucker, I tell you what. God damn, Dad, you taught me a lot, and I love you, man. I mean, hopefully some of these words that I'm saying with these people will help them out, Dad. You know what I mean? And it's, it's funny, though, you know, because... Some of the best memories I have right now off the top of my head really ain't just about me you know what I mean like me and my baby's mom my wife my old lady whatever you want to call her we were separated and I think it was like my maybe Jeremiah's third second or third birthday maybe and I'm sitting over here where I was at the place I was staying and I had Jeremiah and we're celebrating his birthday and out of the blue my dad pulls up. I mean, I wasn't, I didn't care at that point. I mean, we, we, that's when the bond started, you know what I mean? And, um, he comes in with his, his individual Spider-Man cake and Jeremiah's face just lights up. And the way that those two connected that day, I don't know, it just, I seen the love that my dad was trying to give me all those years in between those two. The only thing different was Jeremiah was open to it, where I had closed them all because of nonsense. That's all I'm going to say right now. I'm not going to get into that. Just because of nonsense that I was taught subconsciously. Let's just say that. And then that's when I really started looking at my actions and stuff. You know what I mean? But he was always there. Like, even though I might not have been living with him, he was bringing me motherfucking food. You know what I mean? He, when he came in town, he'd bring me food. He'd bring me money. He'd bring me cigarettes. If I called him and told him to come get me, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, he'd be there. He's done it many a times. You know, you know that song, you find out who your friends are? That's me and my dad's song. You know what I mean? Because that motherfucker has gave up females and places to stay and friends because I didn't like them. I remember being that I was I was a little bastard you know what I mean I remember 
he brought the chick home one day. We were staying on South, well, South of Burr Hands, maybe, at the, I think. It was Burr Hands. We were by Elgin. We were staying over there, and he brings the chick home. Even though my mom left him, I still didn't want him to be happy, I guess. You know what I mean? I still wanted my mom and dad together. So what I did was, I just started throwing shit at the bitch and calling her an ugly crackhead. Well, my dad just slowly took her into the bedroom and explained to her that I was the most important thing in his life and rather she liked it or not, she was going to have to go. He would share out and about just that he wasn't going to be able to bring her back to the place and do anything with her or anything because he had that place with me. I was young, nine, eight, nine years old. But he made it clear to her that, hey, this is me and my son's place. And if he don't like you, you got to go. He always made it clear that I was number one. Well, us kids, you know what I mean? Us kids was number one. It's just that I'm just speaking from my experiences right now. You know what I mean? Looking back now, he put his own happiness on hold. You know what I mean? He was a good dude. I mean, look, I could probably drag this out and drag it out. And drag it out because to be honest with y'all I don't need his birthday to sit here and do this I'm just doing this because otherwise people might think I'm a little obsessive about it but hey I miss my old man I do I mean I miss my moms and I miss everybody but me and my dad had this relationship towards the end of his life where I actually became a man and I realized shit and then we got that relationship. We have a full grown adult relationship. And he was really all I had except for my old lady and kids. And it's hard nowadays to go on without a simple phone call. I mean, yeah, just a simple phone call. But the things that man would say to me would motivate me. I mean, I don't know what to say. I mean, when I was feeling down and out, he'd get me going. I guess I'm just going to go ahead and wrap this up with dad i love you i miss you always will and best believe it's not a day goes by where woody woo ain't thinking about you i mean i'm gonna do my best to make sure my kids remember you i just want to say i love you dad i love you i miss you and i'm gonna do my best to make you proud that's all i can do you know what i mean as you would say be nice be kind I'll throw it up in there to love yourself for who you are. Appreciate the family you've got. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. Rest in peace to my pops, Woodrow Wilson Morris Sr. You are loved and missed dearly by all. Happy birthday. Woody Woo.